How did it come to this? I never wanted to make this video. But you can only be pushed so far before you just think, F*** it. So you take this under advisement, jerkweed. And I'm aware the blowback from this video could be intense. For the past eight years, I've worked to make honest, independent videos about the many quirks and foibles of the entertainment landscape, beholden to no one, creating a place where the discussion of our popular culture was leveled up and more thought-provoking than fanboy feels. Admittedly, that latter wish was an unrealistic fantasy. Nobody wants to talk about pain and suffering. Everybody wants everything to be nice and civil. However, I never could have foreseen the extent to which the fandom of pop culture could produce wingnuts of such misguided purpose combined with a determination so unwavering it rides right past foolhardy and headlong into needless. The hills I have witnessed these imbeciles choose as their place to die would make even the most inept generals throughout history weep. Jesus. In the midst of it all, in the many encounters with internet trolls in the comments, lunatic fans of franchises that disagree with my opinions, You're gonna die, clown! Pedants the likes of which a rational person cannot conceive, certifiably insane people who have found their way to a keyboard, and straight-up haters that all YouTube channels sadly gain like barnacles on the hull of a sailing ship, there is one group at the center of this maelstrom of pointless nerd rage more pathetic than any other. The internet has allowed people who are easily seduced by groupthink to cling to one another even easier and more efficiently than anything in the analog era. This small but obnoxiously loud contingent within fandom has mastered the social media act of forming cloistered groups with draconian rules of membership, and gatekeeping processes that police its members to such a degree the KGB would stand up and take notes. The goal of these groups? eliminate all reproduction parts for Star Wars toys. And in that empty pursuit, these full-blown wackaloons have proven to be the most obsessive compulsive drones to walk the earth this side of the Industrial Revolution. But Michael, I can hear you say, you're a YouTube channel. You don't make toys, you don't sell toys, you don't even design toys. How on earth could you be affected by these groups? That's where it gets really weird, and sad, and disturbing at the same time. But before we go there, I probably need to catch you up on some history. The original vintage Kenner Star Wars figures were wildly popular in their day, and they've remained highly prized and immensely popular with toy collectors even now. Despite nearly a billion of these action figures being sold between 1978 and 1985 and proving surprisingly rugged and durable, they had one Achilles heel. Their weapons were tiny. The blasters and lightsabers were extremely small, and millions of them were lost in backyards and between the cracks of automobile upholstery in the late 70s and early 80s. So the vast majority of loose Star Wars figures that survive no longer have have their weapons. This has been a challenge for collectors since the 1990s, and yes, as early as the 90s, there have been makers of reproduction Star Wars weapons and accessories for the figures and vehicles. With the dawn of the internet, and then eBay in 1998, long-standing sellers like Blue Snag Man and Reproparts.net have been giving collectors options to rearm their Kenner Star Wars figures and make them whole again to enjoy. Keep in mind, I've never not collected vintage Star Wars. I kept all of my childhood stuff, and collected all the way through the 80s and 90s at flea markets, garage sales, and comic shops. Reproductions have practically always been a part of the collecting landscape for vintage Star Wars, and only within the past 15 years have they been described as a problem by collectors on forums and groups. Prior to that, they were simply viewed as available options for people. Given how nostalgic the Star Wars toys were to myself, I naturally worked up through 2014 to collect an all-vintage run of figures and vehicles without any reproduction accessories. And on a few occasions, reproduction weapons were sent with figures I purchased. In those instances, I contacted the sellers who seemed not to know they'd sold reproduction parts in those sales. 
We talked it out, and I had my money refunded just like any other transaction between a seller and a buyer. I never once was mad about it to a level where I wanted reproduction parts to not exist. Maybe that's because I'd been collecting toys for so long, I took a lot of it in stride. And maybe it's because I collect a wide variety of things related to my various interests, so reproductions aren't the devil in my world. Replication as a pursuit is nothing new in the history of fandom, and even legitimate merchandise. Without replication, classic automobiles and vintage airplanes wouldn't function. Without replication, I'd never be able to own a functional RAF battle dress jacket or a 12th century broadsword. And no one would ever be able to drive a DeLorean again. In the circles I travel, the higher the quality of the reproduction and the more accurate it is, the more valuable and highly prized it becomes. Specific to Star Wars, exacting replication is what makes the 501st Legion possible. Declare replication unwanted and guess what happens to the 501st? Before we get into that, let's look at the game board, because you need to know how the pieces are arranged. These good little psycho soldiers of anti-repro aren't working independently. There are three online groups that serve as the core monasteries for these warrior monks of toy collecting. There is the Imperial Gunnery, led by a man we will call General Hines. There is Echo Base UK in England, led by a man we will call Little Lord Fauntleroy. And there is the Imperial Commissary, led by a man we will call Baby Huey. There are smaller satellite groups as well, such as Bespin Prime and Jabba's Palace, who have their own minor barons running the shops. You'll notice I haven't shown you their logos or used their real names. That's because these are the kinds of people who love to exploit all of the tools on social media to suppress criticism of their actions. They can and have gamed the system many times as a matter of course, despite reveling in their self-declared status as public figures of influence. Even though by law I should be allowed to mention their real names as they are public figures, and especially show you their group logos since those all use Star Wars branded styles and fonts and fall squarely into fair use, social media's anti-harassment tools have only succeeded in allowing dishonest people to keep up their harassment without being held to account. Therefore, I will not give them that cowardly loophole in this video. My first direct interaction with any of the leaders of these groups was with Baby Huey of Imperial Commissary. At the time, he was one of three hosts of a Star Wars Collector podcast. I was a guest on this podcast prior to an episode I listened to where they discussed Repro Toys yet again and claimed classic cars should also never use reproduction parts. After listening to Baby Huey's comments in the podcast, I made a post on my personal Facebook page about it. Shortly thereafter, one of the other hosts contacted me and told me to never talk about their show anywhere except through private messages to them. I, of course, told the guy that was an insane request to try and control private people to that degree, and I gave him the finger and told him to go away. A few weeks later, Baby Huey attacked another Star Wars podcast, resulting in a public opinion implosion of his own show because his co-hosts bailed to get as much distance from his comments as they could. I'd, I'd like to go away. A few months later, one of those co-hosts came back around and apologized to me for their attempts to control my discussions of their content. But it was his description of his relationship to Baby Huey that I found the most interesting. He admitted he'd played the role of a minion. Yes, boss. Certainly, boss. Anything you say, boss. And they do play the role of minions well. The proclivity within their ranks to go outside their borders and cause all kinds of trouble is widespread. In waging their admitted unwinnable war, they teach each other how to make fake social media accounts so they can go into other toy groups and have fun, which is a direct contradiction to their repeated claims that they believe in live and let live interactions. General Hines, the head of Imperial Gunnery, put out a video in 2019 claiming he'd been the victim of death threats. I saw this as an opportunity to bridge the gap between the two communities because I had also received a death threat from an anti-repro person. 
Wisconsin. And there was precedent for this as a number of repro collectors and vendors had also received similar hateful harassment and death wishes. For example, a friend of his named Joe was one of the guys making fake accounts to cause trouble, and teaching people how to report eBay and Etsy sellers while reveling in hurting people's seller accounts. Joe came onto Retro Blasting's page and publicly demanded my personal financial records, claiming I was the secret distributor of Smith Lord Creations products in the United States, and that I was, in essence, fleecing my own viewers by advertising my products to them. This is, of course, tinfoil hat level insane. There's something very strange about that man. The best part of the incident with Joe was his claim that I was secretly profiting off my viewers as a shadow distributor. A wild and easily disproven claim, yes, but also one completely lacking in self-awareness. You see, General Hines of Imperial Gunnery and Baby Huey of Imperial Commissary are both actual professional toy dealers. What? That's right, Baby Huey runs live auctions and hosts an annual toy convention with admission fees and everything. General Hines runs his own collectible toy retail store. You can never go home again, Oatman. But I guess you can shop there. And both of these men lead the charge in stoking fears about reproductions, pushing the belief that reproductions are the devil, and then positioning themselves as some of the only safe people to purchase Star Wars toys from if you want to avoid reproductions. Do you see the psychological scam going on here? Even to a guy like me, that's cold. While technically not illegal, it's definitely flirting with unethical. In the background, Baby Huey was even caught recirculating repro weapons to a customer and telling that customer to never reveal the transaction took place. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Baby Huey and Heinz have an active conflict of interest in the reproduction debate. And even though they're selling toys, they say up and down it isn't about money. They claim it's about protecting buyers from fraud, which is actually once again about money. I swore to protect you. Can you protect me from yourself? The problem here is the fact that they're trying to stop an entire sector of the economy from existing. A sector that has existed since the beginning of human commerce and wasn't created to defraud people, but to provide more purchase options in areas where demand exceeds supply. The anti-repro toy community for Star Wars believes they are exempt from the natural forces of material economies, and despite admitting it's not possible to win such a battle, they are hell-bent on fighting it anyway. They've made it priority number one in all of their engagements with other collectors. When you're a group of people knowingly dedicated to an ideological war against an intangible foe, you're basically admitting you're just a rabble of troublemakers that prefer causing pointless chaos rather rather than doing anything constructive in the community. You want a war you can't win? And when I say trouble, I don't mean standard geek fights about Star Wars on social media in the comments. The links these anti-repro warriors have gone to won't just raise your eyebrows. It's downright appalling. Now, inside these groups, for over a decade in some cases, the daily activity is complaining about reproduction toys. I know this because around six or seven years ago, I'd been invited into almost all of these groups at one point or another. I assumed they were mostly just Star Wars toy collector groups, but every day in my feed, it was post after post and page after page of people complaining about repro toys and rants about what needed to be done to repro sellers and repro collectors. And most of it was over over the top and cringeworthy. I realized in the years of following these groups, I'd hardly ever posted a comment. Additionally, these groups have draconian rules for their membership. Specific topics and opinions are 100% banned, and you are instantly banned for discussing them. The leaders of these groups see this as perfectly justified and do not acknowledge the negative effects this has had on the collecting community. They consistently claim when confronted that they have a live and let live mentality while simultaneously emphasizing they should be allowed within their groups to live by the rules of their choosing. And if people don't like it, they should simply leave the anti-repro groups alone. That sounds very Pollyanna, but in truth, it's a manipulation. You see, many of the members of these groups are also members of other toy collector groups, and there is no attempt to enforce their live and let live claims outside of their walls. In other groups and forums, they routinely attack other collectors and content creators who collect differently or have different opinions. It's the equivalent of living in a town 
town that happens to be next to a cult's commune, and the cult asks to be left alone to live as they choose, but they keep sending angry proselytizers into your city streets to preach their loony beliefs. And the only way you can survive is to spread to another area. They believe they should be free to say whatever they want, anywhere, at any time, without suppression, while simultaneously demanding the rights to suppress and censor opinions within their own communities. <laughs> you know, you cops must really think I'm as dumb as you look. That massive hypocrisy is one of the reasons I removed myself from all of those groups. But the other motivating factor was the day I saw Echo Base UK members on my feed posting nude photos of themselves with Star Wars toys covering their genitals. That's my voice. And talking about how they're sexually aroused by the fights they get into over these toys. Um. There comes a point where groupthink begins to eat itself, where perspective and a firm grasp on what is normal and mentally balanced behavior is lost. Because the only people you're interacting with day in and day out are other freaks like yourself. I personally reached out to General Hines to offer to work together on a set of mutually agreed upon guidelines for behavior, regardless of where the comments were posted. It was an attempt to improve the culture of the toy collecting community. Initially, Hines was receptive, but the moment I tried to discuss what the guidelines would be, Hines refused to acknowledge the actions of his side of the aisle, fixated instead on only controlling actions adversarial to himself. When I told General Hines about the actions of Joe, all Hines wanted to do was focus on how Lyo Convoy had confronted Joe and said some colorful words to him. He didn't see anything wrong with what Joe had done, and described his friend as, quote, thorough, like that was a suitable excuse for his minions' attempts to destroy a person's entire reputation. General Hines then accused me of being pro-rape. What? Because Lyo Convoy had joked in a public Facebook thread that Hines needed a repro lightsaber stuck up his butt. Heinz claimed I'd liked the comment, and yet in reality I hadn't even seen the comment yet because I'd been in private chat with Heinz, waiting for a response on the situation with his friend Joe. Heinz then claimed I must have liked it and then immediately unliked it. He immediately created a lie because he could not possibly be wrong. Are you crazy? Is that your problem? He ceased all discussion on my proposed joint statement for behavior guidelines and blocked me with righteous indignation. Then good day, madam! Breaking it down, General Hines used something someone else said in jest, elevated it to a rape threat, pinned it on a different person, and leveraged that to get out of talks to a compromise that would help the entire collecting community. We hope to see you soon for tea. As I said before, these anti-repro guys play the victim and demand apologies and condemnations from others. But as for their own egregious moves, there's always an excuse or exception. Zealots cannot be brought to the negotiating table, but they'll always claim they can be. Zealots do not want peace, but they always claim they're peaceful. They deal in absolutes, and their intangible objective is the only justification needed in their minds for what they do to other people. So they've spent years talking the anti-repro collecting stance from a mere choice into a full-blown crusade. God wants it! God wants it! God! If you think I'm exaggerating, you might be surprised to know that anti-repro members describe fighting against reproduction toys as a moral issue. They claim Star Wars toys are no longer simply toys, but items imbued with an existential magic and a cosmic value beyond the material, and therefore worthy of being a moral value. Baby Huey has even established guidelines for how a person can make themselves worthy to be accepted into the Imperial Commissary by publicly destroying all their reproduction toys in a specific fashion, a process he calls a cleansing ceremony. Or check into a psycho ward, whichever comes first, huh? I'd be curious to find out if they'd grab their toys in a house fire before their own children. Because if they don't, then guess what? They're still just toys. And in my view, Toys are toys, full stop, and Heinz and Baby Huey are selling them like gangbusters. If you're tracking values and selling these in auctions, they aren't more than the sum of their parts, nor are they worthy of religious levels of reverence. Oh, 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 he has given us his time! 
Oh, it's good enough. Hey, show. Little Lord Fauntleroy, the leader of the Echo Base UK group, told me directly that the moral imperative against reproduction was on the same level as preventing war. What? You're shaking your head in disbelief, but there it is in black and white. They believe these are as bad as this. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. It's not only crazy on its face, but it is without precedent in the toy collecting world. Action Man, Mego, Transformers, and even G.I. Joe collectors do not have the incessant organized hatred for reproduction parts that these Star Wars collectors have forced onto the larger community for so many years. These other collector groups have survived on, and in some cases, entirely embraced third-party industries of toy and parts makers. But we're dealing with a group of people who are fighting against these natural forces of global commerce and centuries of economic precedent, all to prevent a very specific set of products from ever evolving in the collectible market. And understand, their alternative isn't being forced to buy reproduction parts. They're allowed to collect them just as they always have. What they're demanding is the world bend to them and create a global safe space for them in which to collect. They want a world where vintage Star Wars toy collectors, no matter where they are, on the planet never have to worry about problems, never have to become experts on what they collect, nor ever experience the negative aspects of any purchase between seller and customer. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. They know what they're asking is ludicrous and unachievable. The evolution of the market for these in-demand collectibles is one they know they cannot stop. But that doesn't prompt them to find another area of discussion to contribute to, one in which they actually can help make a difference difference, like online behavior in the community. And not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. No one can give them what they seek and cause chaos in the name of. They're quite literally unreasonable whining children. I don't want things to change. But you can't stop the change. So unreasonable, in fact, and so dogmatic, that Echo Base UK kicked Toy Poloi out of their community. Do you know how callous you must have become as a group to ban a guy like Toy Poloi from your club? He's literally, and without exaggeration, the nicest and most soft-spoken guy in toy collecting. And all he does is help people fix their toys with ingenious instructional videos. He's the Bob Ross of toy collecting, and the anti-repro people kicked him out. But if you know the caliber of these gems, you wouldn't be surprised. These are the same people who tore into a father of a kid who was battling cancer. Because Smith Lord Creations gifted some of their reproduction Star Wars figures to the boy to help buck up his spirits during his chemo treatments. The attacks from the anti-repro groups were so bad, the father has practically gone into witness protection. So you like to give little kids black eyes, huh? Given all that history, I understand why I personally have not been able to make headway with the anti repro Star Wars groups. I'm not lacking in self-awareness. I'm a difficult person to get along with if you're like most of these individuals. I fight my battles out in the open and not in cloisters or private Facebook groups. I don't make backroom deals. I form my opinions through following cause and effect to facts. And I'm very self-aware of my combative nature when I encounter dishonesty and stupidity. I will not hide from or deny anything I've said to the people I've battled. And it's all right there for anyone to see posted in comment sections on the internet. Anything I've related in a message, I've already said to the person's face. Those are called receipts. And the anti-repro community does not like receipts. They do not like openness, and they always suppress the truth. Don't believe me? Okay, let's explore the anti-repro community's biggest nemesis, Chris Smith of Stan Solo Custom Figures. Chris Smith was the founder of Smith Lord Creations, starting his product line with an excellent vintage-style Stormtrooper Han Solo before selling Smith Lord to fans Strike Back, and then creating Stan Solo to continue making other figures in the vintage style. The anti-repro community has made him public enemy number one, and the story goes from their lips like this. Chris had a few hundred reproduction Princess Leia blasters and then sold them as authentic on eBay, thereby defrauding numerous collectors. So now he's a pariah hated and trashed within these groups constantly. But what actually happened is not so cut and dry. 
Chris was emailing members of Imperial Gunnery back in 2017, trying to get these blasters authenticated. Some dude, who was an Echo Base member we'll call Paul Stark, took a number of samples, and the understanding was those samples would be passed through channels to the right people. When those people didn't get the samples from Paul in a timely manner, Chris sent some more directly to them. Chris was working with the gunnery with complete transparency, even agreeing on a sales description if said blasters turned out to be real production. Now, Echo Base UK, as I said, is run by Little Lord Fauntleroy. Upon initial interaction with him, I pictured him as something of a Wizard of Oz, a dude behind a curtain who never interacts with anyone and is really, really scatterbrained. However, what I settled on as a more accurate comparison for Fauntleroy is King Theoden. But not that one. I mean the clueless, crusty one who really has no idea what's going on in his own kingdom. The day-to-day -day operations of Echo Base UK appear to be run by a guy we'll call Dick Teasel. He's another anti-repro zealot who causes trouble outside his little clubhouse. He's also the worm tongue in Fauntleroy's ear, and the minions praise Teasel for bullying other collectors and cheer him to keep going. While Chris was trying to play nice with the gunnery and Echo Base, Paul Stark started selling those Leia blasters on eBay as authentic. At this point, Echo Base UK's reputation was on the line. An anti-repro community member knowingly sold reproductions as authentic to unsuspecting buyers. They knew they couldn't afford another reputation hit like that. Unfortunately, another Echo Base member sold one of Chris Smith's reproduction yak face figures last year on eBay and deliberately claimed it was vintage. At this point, Teasel begged Chris not to reveal the seller of the yak face. Teasel then quietly booted this person from the community. And they've been content to let Chris Smith take the blame for that incident without formal admission that the seller was one of their own. Everybody's in. Yeah, well not me, so don't paw me with your dirty little guild. Think about that. These groups claim their crusade is against fraud and deception not about making money. But two of the most high-profile incidents of fraud haven't been from the repro makers, but from members of anti-repro communities. You'd think these groups, claiming to be motivated by fraud and dishonesty in the repro market, would have no need to stage a fraudulent sale to prove their long-standing assertions. Trouble is, they had to create the fraud for it to exist, and the silence on that mic drop is deafening. Yeah, I guess you guys aren't ready for that yet. Since people like Chris are banned from these groups and their reputations tarnished, the leadership in these groups can spin any story they like to their minions. Sorry, not story. I meant to say lie. They don't stand by the details, and they let the court of public opinion and rumor have their way with anyone they see as a threat to their clubhouses. And lying is what the anti-repro camp does prolifically. Alas, they don't do it at all well. We've just seen how they covered up one of the indiscretions of their own to protect the hollow reputation of their club. And if you recall the incident with General Hines' friend Joe, he tried to deny he was involved in the creation and use of fake social media accounts to cause chaos in other toy collector communities. But once again, Again, those pesky receipts. In fact, Teasel was messaging directly with Chris Smith, who was working in good faith with him to give all the information possible on his reproductions so people could identify them. Teasel was even buying Smith's reproductions. They also claimed Smith was trying to trick them with the Leia blasters the entire time. But if all Smith wanted to do was trick people into thinking the blasters were authentic, why would he go to the trouble of communicating with these groups in the first place? He could have simply started selling the blasters on eBay as authentic without even associating with these groups, and made maximum money on each one. Work less, make more. He stood up and made himself a target in an attempt to get their help to sell responsibly within the community. A person trying to make money through fraud doesn't call attention to themselves while asking the authentication police to verify that their reproductions aren't legit, because that only results in them getting less money per reproduction. The anti-repro zealots constantly protest that they'd be fine with reproductions if they were clearly identified. But every time a reproduction parts maker like Chris Smith tries to work with their leaders openly about their products, it always ends up not being enough for them. And the vendor is vilified anyway, and they start up their shenanigans of reporting the seller's listings and harassing their businesses. Except in the curious case of reproduction vendor Blue Snagman. When I spoke to General Hines, I asked him specifically why fans and Strike Back and Stan Solo were constantly targeted by their groups, while a long-standing legacy repro maker like Blue Snagman is largely left alone. 
Hines replied that Blue Snag Man was deemed a harmless amusement within the community. He tried to sell the idea that Blue Snag Man was like a lovable, goofy uncle, like a Rip Taylor character. Oh, that doesn't make sense to me. My point is there's some very strange bias at play within the anti-repro movement. This kind of thing would be annoying enough if it was limited to arguments about toy collecting in toy groups, but the anti-repro movement has seen fit to muscle in on projects that aren't about plastic fabrication whatsoever. Twice this year already they've gone outside the bounds of toys, once to hijack a book publishing project and a second time to push around a Star Wars news website. When the photographer of the Kenner Star Wars toys decided to kickstart a second volume of legacy packaging photography, he opted to allow the leader of an anti-repro toy group, a guy we'll call Impossible Burger, to manage the publication of the book. Fan Strike Back, the now owners of Smith Lord Creations, wanted to pledge three thousand dollars to back the book. Impossible Burger said he knew who they were and liked their products, and they started working on a way to help co-promote the book. But the anti-repro group saw the announced pledge and raised absolute hell. Impossible Burger demanded fan strike back take back their pledge. He then claimed he'd always agreed with the anti-repro sentiment and that he wasn't pressured into changing his mind by anti-repro comments. Except that he did admit the project was attacked by anti-repro people and did admit it, it was the motivation to rescind the pledge. Trying to talk to Impossible Burger was like staring into the mouth of madness. The reversals in his statements were endless. Seriously, I'm not into the whole team thing. I'm more of a lone wolf sort of person. I join those groups because I like vintage Star Wars buy and sell and discuss. I join those groups. I'm more of a lone wolf sort of person. I'm familiar with your stuff, which is great. No, we didn't know about the reproduction. No, we didn't know. I'm familiar with your stuff. There are plenty of people in your circle that run in my circle. Mutual friends? I don't know any of those people I messaged. I don't know any of those people I messaged. There are plenty of people in your circle that run in my circle. I could have taken this public, but I didn't. I kept it private. I removed my comments about you on Bespin Prime, YouTube, Twitter, and my personal Star Wars Vintage Collecting Group. I removed my comments about you on Bespin Prime, YouTube, Twitter, and my personal Star Wars Vintage Collecting Group. I kept it private. There was nothing to give in over. They attacked us because I posted that Fan Strike Back pledged $3,000. They attacked us because I posted that Fan Strike Back pledged $3,000. There was nothing to give in over. I didn't go to anyone privately and talk shit about you. Mutual friends, I don't know any of those people I messaged. People I messaged. I didn't go to anyone privately. You made me out to be this evil gatekeeper of the anti-repro community. There is no room in Star Wars collecting for these hacks. Anyone found trying to sell any counterfeit items as vintage Star Wars in this group will be dealt with swiftly. That is all. There is no room in Star Wars collecting for these hacks. You made me out to be this evil gatekeeper of the anti-repro community. It's not my side of the fence. You're on that side. You're on that side. It's not my side. That side. My side. That side. My side. That side. My side. That side. My side. My side. My side. My side. <laughs> He even went after total strangers on social media and cussed them out, claiming he had a list of enemies that he wouldn't forget. Behind the safety of the walls of the anti-repro groups, which are not public forums and therefore safe from non-members being able to use Facebook's anti-harassment tools against anyone inside, Impossible Burger told the other members that retroblasting was sympathetic to the reproduction toy makers because he claimed, completely without evidence, that we receive free toys from makers like Fan Strike Back and Stan Solo. There was just one hilarious problem. I buy everything I review from Stan Solo and Smith Lord Creations, and many months before this Kickstarter launched, I had publicly posted my receipts from these purchases on Retroblasting. <laughs> the best part of all this? Impossible Burger is another anti-repro group leader who claims to be completely against fake and unlicensed products. But he himself is the author of two unauthorized Star Wars books. Let me get this straight. 
and the photography book is also not authorized by Disney or Hasbro. This is a common hypocrisy with these anti-repro groups, though. Imperial Commissary, for example, uses Star Wars trademark fonts on their merchandise, like hats and shirts that they sell to the public, all while still fighting a crusade against reproduction and unlicensed goods. Unless Hasbro makes them, of course, with things like the Retro Collection. The mental gymnastics the anti-repro groups have used to justify those retro collection figures has been truly remarkable. And very recently, Star Wars news website Fanthatrax conducted an interview with Chris Smith about his work on Stan Solo figures. The article was pre-approved after the idea was submitted to the Fanthatrax editorial staff by writer Mark Telfer. But less than 24 hours after it was published, they pulled it down, claiming they were against stories about fake goods. When I got in contact with them about the situation and asked them why they'd caved into pressure from an outside group, they did the same thing Impossible Burger did. They claimed it wasn't motivated by attacks from anti-repro people. They claimed it was an editorial decision by their staff, the details of which they would not disclose to preserve their editorial independence, which is laughable because independence is the opposite of caving into pressure from outside influences. You keep using the word. I don't know think it means what you think it means. And even more laughable because their denial was a bold-faced lie, as it was Dick Teasel himself who posted the interview inside Echo Base UK to rile up his minions. These people then went on the warpath against Fanthatrax for running an interview with Chris Smith. And soon one of Fanthatrax's own editors was right there on Echo Base UK professing his thanks along with apologies for upsetting them and letting them know the article had been removed. Which is exactly what caving into pressure looks like, just in case any of you were uncertain. Only a few hours later, in a move I did not see coming, Little Lord Fauntleroy private messaged me. I'd never spoken to or heard of him before, and when I told him I could see he was a member of Echo Base, he corrected me saying he was Echo Base. Do you know who I am? No, I, I can't say that I do. I'm very important. Uh... This level of ego isn't uncommon with these anti-repro leaders. Baby Huey loves to brag about how much money he has, the finder's fees he pays to his minions for sourcing collections, and all his great lawyers. General Hines belittled one of his own followers, talking about how much of an influencer he is, and even bragged at me about how his followers defend him because of charisma or something dumb like that. I'm kind of a big deal. Really? People know me. So anyway, Fauntleroy claimed he was contacting me to try and understand why pro-repro people get so upset with anti-repro people. A just question, my liege. <sighs> When I outlined how anti-repro people have acted, the accusations they've tossed at people, the verbal abuse, he kept saying that wasn't him, and that it wasn't Echo Base, and that it wasn't his fault. What me? He wanted me to speak for the entire pro-repro community, even as he refused to speak for the entire anti-repro community. So I pressed him about the Fanthatrax interview being pulled, and he claimed, ready for this, that Echo Base had nothing to do with it. How can you be so obtuse? The leader of Echo Base doesn't even know what's going on on his own page. And yet there was Dick Teasel stoking the flames of rage about the article, and there was the editor of Fanthatrax on the page apologizing to everyone at Echo Base UK for upsetting them, stepping into line like a good little boondist. But ask little Lord Fauntleroy himself, and he swears that never happened. And Fauntleroy concedes that the actions of many anti-repro people are out of bounds. But his solution is waging the unwinnable war against commerce. He believes all the bad behavior will go away once they get their way with repro makers. So when they claim there is a solution, remember they just said in the previous breath that the solution isn't attainable. Which means what they're really saying is, we have no intention of reigning in our members and we ultimately condone what they say and do in service to our cause. There must be war. God wills it! God wills it! Fauntleroy was also adamant the anti-repro minions were innocent of any harassment outside the boundaries of their private groups, yet simultaneously claimed the bad behavior was on both sides. This is another rhetorical tactic they love to spout. 
it's bad on both sides. Despite giving Fauntleroy multiple concrete examples of anti-repro people acting badly, he refused to do the same in return. He spoke in generalities of pro-repro collectors making trouble, but ignored my requests for those receipts. And then he asked me to provide him with the evidence that would reinforce his vague claims of bad behavior on the pro-repro side. I was admittedly so confused, I assumed assumed that had to be a typo. But very quickly, his obsession with determining that I was fair and balanced made me realize it wasn't a typo. He had no evidence of his own and was asking me for the receipts he needed. When it came to anti-repro behavior, he dismissed all of my provided examples as personal. Apparently, if it happens to you, it doesn't count in Fauntleroy's eyes. Determined to tell the full story, I reached out to more than a few friends within these clubs for examples with receipts of pro-repro people making life miserable for anti-repro groups. All they would tell me is they didn't want anyone from their groups to find out they were talking to me in private, and not one of them would provide me with any recorded evidence of pro-repro attacks on anti-repro groups. I can provide you with information, but only so long as it's in my best interest to do so. They didn't directly refuse the request. They uniformly ignored it like I'd never asked. An odd non-response to someone actively trying to get balanced evidence to tell their side of the story. This is a dead man talking to me, Jim. That's it. Which leads me to believe they don't have any receipts, that their story of pro-repro collectors being equally bad is just that, a narrative without any foundation in fact. That's not important, is it? What's really important is that None of this ever happened. One good friend I related all this to put it better than I could. He said, My biggest issue with the non-repro guys is they like to name call and belittle and somehow invalidate others collecting habits. In contrast, the repro guys sit back there just happily collecting, and they don't give two shits about what the non-repro guys do. So who is really the instigator of these problems? Thanks for playing. The anti-repro people I contacted also all to a person begged not to be mentioned by name, and feared reprisals from their own groups of friends for simply communicating with the guy from Retroblasting. You're either with us or you're against us, Jimmy Boy. Oh, I'm with you. Good. That's all I wanted to hear. Which brings us to the final story of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Throughout much of the events I've related in this video, early on in the background of this timeline, I was contacted by someone whose name I'm very tempted to reveal because it's a made-up name anyway. However, this guy comes off as a very fragile and easily led individual, so outing him even by his avatar would be like beating a toddler with a trash can. We'll refer to him as Steve Dave. Steve Dave contacted me in the wake of the conflict over Impossible Burger's unauthorized Kenner photography book. The tone of his messages was that of someone who wanted to escape from a cult, but didn't want to get caught and punished. Like a good little minion, Steve Dave described Star Wars toys and reproduction toys in nearly biblical terms. Reproductions were a darker side of the collecting community. Is it possible to learn this power? Steve Dave had the same goal as the rest of his comrades. He wants a global safe space to collect in where he never has to worry. And just like Fauntleroy and others, he disregarded the deplorable behavior exhibited by his friends in these groups. For example, when I asked him point blank what would be worse, a reproduction weapon in the mail or having someone publicly accuse you of being pro-rape, Steve Dave refused to answer. What? That's some serious brainwashing right there. That's a simple mind that is easily programmed and led around by a leash. Okay, I'm with you fellas. Sadly though, Steve Dave admitted being part of those groups caused him immense anxiety and made collecting painful. Steve Dave admitted the repro debate wasn't present in collector groups for other toy lines. Like Fauntleroy, he was also afraid of his spouse. If I were these guys' spouses and had to listen to even half of what they put out on the internet at people, I'd probably have a frying pan ready to swing into their faces if they brought up Star Wars toys too. You need a drink, I'll, I'll be right back. He even confessed he was grateful that I would be friends with someone who had differing opinions about reproduction toys. These groups create environments where people are afraid to disagree, afraid to discuss specific topics, afraid to reveal who they speak with in their private lives, and even afraid to be friends with other collectors outside of these online communities. As far as I'm concerned, you're yellow. 
Do I have to tell you how messed up that is? Please tell me I don't. Steve Dave would periodically come back around for more chats, especially when it was clear he was having a crisis of conscience, when his programming had been reset by spending too much time in these groups. And during one instance, I dutifully reminded him about everything I'd been subjected to, the lies, accusations, and character assassination. And Steve Dave laughed about it. He made a joke out of it and laughed. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's nice you laughing. At that point, I could tell Steve Dave wasn't genuine in his messages. I'm sure he was communicating on his own initiative and hoping to go back and provide his friends like Dick Teasel with juicy intel about the guy at Retroblasting. I've been playing this game long enough to know when someone is playing the role of a spy. I know the squealers when I see them. And... But like I've said, I have nothing to hide. He could post the entire conversation online and I'd just shrug. Because it's actually people like Steve Dave who have to hide themselves. Steve Dave would even send me photos of himself without solicitation and then immediately beg me not to share them with anyone. Why on earth would I want to share a photo of a random stranger that I didn't ask for with anybody I know? <laughs> The final straw came in the aftermath of the Fanthatrax article incident. The writer had given me permission to take the rejected and deleted interview with Chris Smith and post it on Retroblasting's website. It was an excellent interview and didn't need to be tossed in the trash. Steve Dave clapped back on Twitter, asking if I had permission to post that article. There was no reason for anyone to ask a question like that, but that's what the repro cops have been trained to do in their groups. They are trained to believe they have the right to control everyone's behavior and police everyone's actions about anything at any time, and they themselves are accountable to no one. Steve Dave tried to lie and say he wasn't asking for any underhanded reason, but then when I cornered his logic, he had no choice but to cave and admit he thought I stole the article without permission because of my support of Stan Solo action figures on my channel. You have problems. The poor guy isn't honest about his motives or his actions. I think he lies out loud in an attempt to convince himself he's not a craven. But you can't run from your own receipts. I didn't come at you. You just treated it like I did. Okay, I admit. I thought you might have copied and pasted the article. You insinuated I'm part of a devious group looking to take down repro people. We need Hasbro to go after Chris Smith and shut him down. I do nothing to support any action they take. All I do is keep track of the market and occasionally buy items. That's it. We need Hasbro to go after Chris Smith and shut him down. You don't believe me. You don't believe what I say about my place in the Echo Group. No. No, I don't, Steve Dave. Because you're a liar. See, their morals, their code, it's a bad joke. Again, the mental gymnastics would be hilarious if they weren't so pathetic and depressing. Despite Steve Dave having experienced my willingness to speak at length with him and expressing his surprise that someone outside his group was willing to be friends with him, he never thought for a moment that I could be friends with the writer of the interview because his brain had been reset back in those groups after the last time we'd spoken and he'd become a total idiot again. You two are just dumber than a bag of hammers. At this point, he didn't even have the mental acuity to remember that Fanthatrax and Mark Telfer had interviewed me several months prior. In the process of completing this video, I received a final message from Steve Dave. He accused me of attempting to brainwash him. <laughs> he said I was abusive and the leader of something he called a blocking cult. I'm not even sure what that is. He insisted he wasn't an anti-repro crusader, and even claimed he'd always been polite to me. Well, I was lying. The anti-repro cabal always assumes adversarial motives from others because adversarial motives drive all of their actions and interactions. The proof is in the lies, the receipts, their behavior, and their dedication to an enemy they know is so intangible. They say out loud they'll never defeat it even as they sharpen their swords for another round of needless drama with other toy collectors. Give me a wall. That is what I do. And in Steve Dave, we see the mindset of the average anti-repro minion. There aren't a lot of neurons firing there. We're talking about a guy who made the statement to me with a straight face that the brainwashing of the anti-repro movement is a good kind of brainwashing. Why, oh why, didn't I take the blue pill?
They're happy to be led like cattle, and they want their hobby to require no thought whatsoever and never ask them to be adults in their behavior. In short, you're sorry for yourselves. Fear is normal. But stop worrying about it and about yourselves. Once you accept that idea, it won't be so tough. And so I dedicate this video to Baby Huey, General Hines, Little Lord Fauntleroy, Impossible Burger, Dick Teasel, Steve Dave, and the entire anti-repro movement. A movement that claims to have nothing to do with money, even as they cash in mercilessly on the backs of the communities they've created, whether through toys, unauthorized books, unlicensed merch, or misguided minions to worship them. You've truly turned hypocrisy into an art form. You've turned a blind eye to your community's actions to achieve those aims, letting them remain focused on an unwinnable war against commerce itself. You have openly declared toys to be more important than treating people with respect and decorum. You're okay with what your groups have done to people in a pointless fight you admit you cannot win because there is no dragon to slay. And worst of all, you do all of this while adamantly claiming you have a live and let live philosophy. I hate a man like you so much that I'm going to get your head down in the mud and trample it. Your anti-repro movement is one of suppression, censorship, and control, no matter how you attempt to spin it. And you've deluded yourselves into thinking you're the heroes of this story. I have brought peace, freedom, justice. By his deeds shall a man be known, and your deeds are well known. You are quick to tell others how they don't matter, and how unimportant they are if they disagree with you. And in your elitism, you've become blind to the fact that you are not the majority. You've appointed yourselves the police force of Star Wars toy collecting, and you think everyone else is obligated to be obedient to your will. But I've got news for you. I'm not locked in here with you. <laughs> You're locked in here with me! 